Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Undeadly Poison. Beloved family, our text says, So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, Make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by the snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Numbers 21, 6-9 Brazilian doctors came up with a clever way to fight the effects of venom on humans by using the same venom as an antidote. They realized that administering doses of venom in gradually increasing doses to large animals, such as horses, the animals could develop antibodies in their immune system. The antibodies called antivenin fought off the venom. Antivenin then was extracted from the hemoglobin of an immunized horse's blood. And then the antivenin was introduced into the bloodstream of a snake bite victim. It became attached to the venom and stopped it from interfering with the normal body process. The antidote was always in the poisoning. Ah, King Jesus drew a profound comparison in the Gospel of John to the deadly poisonous snakes that Moses witnessed that were killing many people because of their rebellion and sin. And how the antidote is in the poisoning. The remedy of relationship is in the problem of religion. Nicodemus, a religious scholar, was not satisfied about his religious life. So in the dark of night, he came to Jesus and Jesus, knowing what troubled him, said, Unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? John 3, 4. Unless... One is born of water and the spirit. You can't enter the kingdom. Natural ram can only give birth to natural things, but the supernatural ram gives birth to supernatural life. By now, Nicodemus' head is spinning. He says, I don't understand. What do you mean? How does this happen? And then our Lord Jesus says, If you're unable to understand and believe what I've told you about the natural realm, what will you do when I begin to unveil the heavenly realm? No one has risen into the heavenly realm except the Son of Man who also exists in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. How was that for a Midnight Kingdom Bible study lesson? Nicodemus was blown away with revelation. But it's this comparison that Jesus says about being lifted up like the snake on a pole that brought healing and deliverance. Jesus Christ is saying that God is holy and he is just. The Spirit cannot just brush aside sin when he grants the new life. For sin to be dealt with, God's justice must be satisfied. The Son of Man must be lifted up to satisfy God's wrath on behalf of sinners who believe in him. The Israelites complained and murmured against God about the deliverance from Egypt, about the manna they ate, and decided to worship false idols in God's face. He gave them holy bread from heaven, but they craved earth's meat and beef of cows. So they erected what they craved, a golden cow. In other words, they not only complain, they sin. So God sent fiery serpents or deadly poisonous snakes among them that killed them. So they complained to Moses and prayed to God to save them. And in our opening text, we see God tells Moses, erect a bronze snake on a pole. 
This represents the sin of worshiping the idol and false god that can destroy us. And he said anyone who was bitten only need to look at the snake and be healed. Because of the sins that the Israelites committed, they were under the punishment of death. Our Lord God says because of the sin and rebellion, we too are under the punishment of death. Isn't it interesting that the same replica, that snake on a pole, is what the medical community use as their symbol? So we are to look to them for healing? If we repent and look not at the snake on a pole, but the lamb on the tree, we shall be saved. Glory be to God, family. He said your healing will come out of the affliction if you obey me. So Jesus says, as they looked at the snake, at that which afflicted them, with faith they shall be healed. Likewise, by just looking at Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, by faith we are saved and healed. We don't need any other works, religious practices, none of that, just to look with faith at Christ Jesus. As God did with the deadly snakes, he provides a remedy from the problem. And the remedy had to be lifted up so that the poisonous sting of sin was not death anymore. It is sin that gives death its sting and the law that gives sin its power. But we thank God for giving us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is your victory? Praise be to our Lord King Jesus Christ. For he says to his disciples in Mark, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will all get well. Once we're in Jesus Christ, the poison from the serpent, Satan, or the snake is undeadly poison. Much love.